And now to the twisted tale of the so-called doomsday mom who murdered her two kids. Lori Vallow will learn her fate tomorrow when she is sentenced in Idaho. In May, a jury found Vallow guilty of murdering her two youngest children, Tylee and JJ. She was also found guilty of conspiracy to commit murder for the death of Tammy Daybell, her current husband's late wife. Let's bring in criminal trial attorney and News Nation legal contributor Sarah Azari on this. Sarah, thanks for being here. Thanks, Natasha. Good to be with you. You know, Vallo is expected to get life in prison without parole. Do you see any situation in which that doesn't happen this week? I don't. You know, I typically am careful about not re reading the tea leaves, but we have a conviction here, or three actually. She's got the theft, and then she's got the, the conspiracy to murder as to Tammy and the two murders as to her children. And at sentencing, uh, it's really about mitigating and aggravating factors. And the prosecution is going to argue the heinousness and the brutality and the evil nature of these murders, the way that it was done. And then also her post-murder conduct, which is that sort of not just the callous, you know, have a wedding in Hawaii, but lying to police officers about where the bodies of her children are, um, covering up, you know, that's what really is going to look really. And this is the judge. Remember, the judge is sentencing her as the judge just sat through this trial and is very familiar with all of this evidence. And so on the mitigation side, Natasha, it's all about whether finally we're going to hear something about her mental health. You know, we've all sat here and gone, something is wrong with this woman. But she really controlled her defense, didn't let her defense attorneys you know, put her mental health at issue. Uh, and so will we see it at sentencing and will she speak up uh, also matters. You know, I think, you know, if, if they're going to do a presentation on her mental health or, uh, you know, a lack of mental health, then perhaps she will speak and maybe her statement will sort of corroborate um, that she's not all there. You know, are you expecting Vallo uh, to say something at tomorrow's hearing? And if so, does that make a difference at this point? You know, I think it all depends on, uh, we saw her really stoic, uh, very disconnected, very sort of people were saying she looks like she has no heart. How is this a mother? Um, that has to change. And if she's going to make a statement of remorse to this court that pairs up with any sort of mental health mitigating factors that she might present, then I think it's a good idea, idea for her to speak. How much that might sway the judge against giving her LWOP, life without a possibility of parole, I don't know, because, again, I think the aggravating factors here are, are, are pretty strong. You know, four people are also expected to give victim impact statements, including Vallow's only surviving child. How much do those statements uh, impact the judge's decisions, meanwhile? Well, you know, uh, the interesting thing I, I, I read about Idaho is that um, they're very strict on who gets to give these impact statements. Uh, it's limited to immediate family, to the point where Vallow's aunt... Uh, who wants to speak in lieu of her mother who passed away had to get special permission because she's not a linear uh, immediate family and so uh i think the judge will take it into consideration but i really believe this is the kind of situation where the judge already has in mind what the sentence should be and it really comes down to whether the defense can sort of move the needle a little bit away i mean she's facing 10 years to life uh, on the murder charges and the conspiracy to, mur conspiracy to murder. Um, so will she get something less than life without parole is the issue. And I think it really just turns on whether her mitigating factors are strong enough to, to sway the court. You know, after this is all said and done tomorrow, Lori Vallow still faces a trial in Arizona. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, so Arizona, we, we heard a lot of evidence that was from the Arizona case in the Idaho case. And so tomorrow is the finality of this a verdict, right? The verdict without a uh, uh, sentencing is not a final judgment. So that conviction tomorrow is going to be final and be brought, admitted against her in a trial in Arizona. Not only that, um, all of the evidence that relates to potentially Arizona as well, like her beliefs, the evilness of her beliefs, et cetera, those can be used in that case as well. So everything in the Idaho case is free game in the Arizona case. And I bet those prosecutors have already really sort of streamlined the evidence that played out in Idaho. And, uh, you know, in, in Idaho, she doesn't face the death penalty like she initially did. I mean, in Arizona, like she did in Idaho, because it's a conspiracy to murder, not murder. But again, the conviction and the evidence will both play a great role in that trial. Okay. Sarah Zaria, appreciate the context and time. Thank you so much. Thanks, Natasha. Right.
Thank you for watching. Go to newsnationnow.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.